Hello everyone, welcome back to another weekly reading vlog. I'm starting off this reading vlog a little bit weird, I guess, because one thing that you guys will not expect that I'm about to do is um, reread The Pride of the Orange Tree. Now, I'm not doing this the normal way, so you probably won't actually see me do this in a lot of vlogs. I am thinking of maybe making it into a separate video, so I want your feedback on that if you can very kindly let me know. Um, but basically I've been wanting to reread The Priory of the Orange Tree for quite a while because I have this paperback edition now and I really like annotating my favourite books so I've been wanting to annotate this one and my annotations sometimes include things like drawings. I basically want it to look really battered and well loved and just have my scribblings all over it but somebody I know called Bryony is actually hosting a read-along for this but it takes place over a few months. I can't quite remember when it ends, let me have a look. So the read-along starts today and ends in August and the basic aim is to read 50 pages a week because I know a lot of people have been saying that it's quite an intimidating book to read so Bryony has basically created this read-along that would break it down into 50 page stints and just take it slowly because why not? I don't know if I will be sticking to the schedule, I don't know if I will end up falling behind or even skip ahead, I don't really know but I'm hoping to at least start along with the read-along and we'll see how it goes. I'll leave a link to any information I can find down in the description box if you want to join yourself and do a little game of catch-up but yes I am going to be annotating this a little bit at a time which is why you guys won't be seeing it in my vlogs because if I'm reading 50 pages a week, I'm going to be including that book in many weekly vlogs, which would be very annoying. So I was actually thinking of making a video of me annotating it, if it does prove to be interesting. I'm basically doing one dedicated video to The Prior of the Orange Tree, showing you through my annotations, any drawings if I do any, which I'm not promising because I'm not that good at drawing. <laughs> I'm basically just following the process of me making my slow way through this book. I don't know whether it would be spoiler free or a full spoiler video so if you do have any thoughts on that topic let me know in the comments below and also just if you'd like to see that sort of video. I've never done it before but I am planning to make this a full project of sorts so I just think it could be quite fun to follow along maybe. <laughs> So I'm actually about to start doing that now and I just thought I'd show the setup process because I'm going to tab every 50 pages or like each section that we'll be reading and then I'm going to start reading and annotating it. So you'll see a little bit of what the project would be like if I did the full video but I just thought I would start the vlog off this way for once. So I won't be including my thoughts on this in any of my weekly vlogs but just know that this is one of my favourite books and you will probably see it later on in a wrap up somewhere further on in the year. So although just a warning, if you don't like seeing the spines being broken on books, turn away now. <laughs> Sometimes that it doesn't make sense It's even harder to comprehend 
What up guys? It is Wednesday evening and I should have updated yesterday. I had the intention to because things happened yesterday <laughs> um, and then I just didn't. So here we are. I feel like recently I've had so many like big updates that I'm going to burst if anything else happens soon because... <laughs> ah, so yesterday I finished writing my dissertation and I handed it in and it's an official thing like this is a very substantial project and I actually did the thing this is t this is legit <laughs> which seems surreal to me because I did my dissertation related to ancient classics and retellings of them or more specifically as the title is Restorative Storytelling How Contemporary Feminist Retellings of Greek Mythology Reclaim the Marginalised Voices of Women and it's surreal to think that I have completed an actual academic thing about ancient classics like this is something that I've been working towards literally since like before I'd even started university and I never thought I'd be able to do it on an academic level but here we are and it's done and it's handed in it's now out in the world <laughs> I do still have one more essay to write just one more essay and I'm determined that I will have it done by Friday which will be pushing myself and my deadline is not until Wednesday so if I don't make it then it's not a big deal but I just want to finish and I'm doing a live show on Sunday with Becca and Gavin to celebrate their birthday and I would quite like to be able to celebrate something myself during that and just be able to fully actually celebrate because like this makes me sad the fact that it's in a plastic wallet because I was supposed to have it properly bound and have the full-on I handed in my dissertation photo shoot that everybody has but that just can't happen so it's residing in a plastic wallet. <laughs> I still have the one essay to go so I'm not fully like oh my god I'm done but hopefully by the end of this vlog I will be. But the other thing that happened yesterday that just blew my mind. I was shortlisted for the UK YABA awards. I made it onto the shortlist for best established vlogger and <laughs> that is a lot to take in because I did mention before that I made it onto the long list which was a big enough deal already because it meant that enough people in the UK actively put forward my name to be nominated and now that I've made it onto the shortlist that means enough UK bookish people, I do keep saying UK because only people in the UK could vote, but that means enough people in the UK once again went out of their way to vote for me and <laughs> I made it onto the shortlist which is just incredible because like I can call myself an award nominated vlogger like what oh my god and it just means so much because this year has been oh my goodness Jesus what this year has been something <laughs> I feel like I've been balancing everything very precariously but my like active promotion of reading and books and wanting to talk about books all the time is one of my number one priorities at all times and I'm so glad that you guys can see that in some way and support me and actually enjoy my content it just ah, it makes me so happy so Thank you so so much if you were one of those people or even if you're just here supporting because as always you are the people that are giving me this platform so <laughs> big babble aside that is just it's incredible and if I receive any more good news within a short period of time I might actually just explode. I'm pretty sure the deciding vote is left to the judges at UKYABA and it won't be announced for quite a while because the actual award ceremony is meant to be held at YALC so that is the Young Adult Literature Convention. It's hosted in London at the end of July but obviously probably won't be hosted so I don't really know what will happen there but I don't think we'll find out for a while anyway but just... God what do I do with all these emotions? But what I really need to tell you guys is about what I'm reading <laughs> because I haven't done that yet in this vlog. So I'm currently reading two different books. 
two different books. <laughs> the first one that I'm reading is Royal Assassin by Robin Hobb. This is the second book in the Farseer trilogy and I'm reading this for Elder Linger Long. I am one of the co-hosts, it's hosted by Becca for the Catch Up Book Club and I loved my reread of Assassin's Apprentice, the first book. So Assassin's Apprentice follows a boy who is a bastard son of a prince and he's kind of just returned to the palace when he's around five or six years old and because of this the prince is shamed into abdication and then leaves the country with his wife and just kind of leaves Fitz behind. So Fitz is left to be raised by the stable man. Then as he's growing up the king realises that Fitz holds a very particularly interesting position in the family because he's a bastard son so he's not like up there in the hierarchy but it's high enough in the rankings to gain the education needed to become an assassin. So the king places Fitz in a series of assassin training and that is where we start with the first book. Now this one is considerably larger compared to the first. The first book is only 300 and something pages. This one is 650. <laughs> So it quite literally doubles in size but I am so so excited to return to this because I loved Assassin's Apprentice so much. I am reading along with the audiobook because I just really like how the narrator sounds with this and it was interesting because I am already 46 pages in so I'm not too far but the first six or seven pages were basically a recap of the previous book which I have never come across in a fantasy book and it was really interesting. It's already taken a turn I didn't expect in terms of like the relationships of the main character but I'm intrigued to see where it goes because from the synopsis here which I'm not going to read out because spoilers it seems to expand the world considerably so I'm excited to see how that goes but the book that I'm probably going to prioritise for this week is Aurora Burning by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff because this is an arc and it actually came out yesterday, whoops. But this is the sequel to Aurora Rising and I read Aurora Rising towards the end of last month so that is in my April wrap up if you want to go and check that out. But I rated that one about three stars. I didn't love it. Um, I had quite a lot of complicated feelings about that one actually. But it's a sci-fi book, young adult, it follows a wayward band of space cadets. So it starts out with a boy called Tyler Jones who is basically the alpha of the school. He is one of the best and he's set to take some exams so that he can graduate as this kind of space cadet. However, he never actually makes it to these exams because he's too busy saving a girl called Aurora. So instead of being able to choose his own team, he ends up with this disjointed band of people who would usually be considered the like leftover people, you know, when people are just really awful at leaving the specific types of people until last when they pick a team, that sort of team. But it turns out that while these people might not be too popular choices when it comes to teamwork, they are actually all very, very skilled in what they do. So this team of people get sent out on a mission, everything goes wayward, Aurora ends up <laughs> um, hitching a ride on the spaceship and quite frankly, chaos sets loose. So. The book is very action-packed, I'd say, at least it is in the second half. But as I said, I didn't love it, so I'm kind of hesitant going into this one, but I am currently 174 pages in, and I'm hoping to get to 200 pages tonight, and then I will swap to Royal Assassin. But my thoughts on this one so far, I'm not finding it as cringy as I did the first one, but that could just be because I'm used to the first one and because we know who the characters are now, it's not like, they're not being described too heavily. And I think it was very much the descriptions and the building of the characters that seemed cringy because it was built primarily through dialogue. And I don't like the dialogue. What has happened to my voice? I don't typically like the dialogue in this book because it does a lot of things where it tries to be funny and it just misses the mark for me. I don't like it, I find it really cringy. But then at the same time, I do like the banter between the characters in this book. So it's still really hit and miss. I do find that I'm enjoying the plot in this one because you are quite literally launched right back into the action on the very first page. It's just like mid-action scene. Um, so I think it will be interesting to see this one and also because I didn't really care for the characters in the first book but the character that is on the front cover of this one is my favourite and so it's kind of more geared towards him. So I think I will enjoy this one a little bit more, however I'm not too motivated to read it still. I'm having to tell myself to read it instead of wanting to read it whereas with Royal Assassin I actually want to read that one but I'm holding off until I finish this one because I do at least want to finish one of the books before Believathon starts. <laughs> Whether that will happen or not I don't know but... It's my mission to finish this one this week. I do actually have some book mail to show you but I'm going to wait until tomorrow because I have more on its way that should arrive tomorrow which is 
this shouldn't be happening I should not be buying books but I treated myself after I handed in my dissertation and it is actually going towards my master's course so that's my excuse. Instead of splitting it out across multiple days I will just give you a mini book haul tomorrow. Um so I did a thing. <laughs> Honestly don't love it but it's done now. I'm fine with the length of it which is what usually people would freak out about but I've had my hair this short before. Um it's this but I don't like. Um I don't know why I did it. I don't know why but I decided to cut myself layers in and I did do it properly and they are actually like a gradual thing but you can't really tell because of how my hair grows or how it like naturally falls because the top of it and the front is a lot curlier than the rest of it so the underneath is like not straight but the ends are really straight so it kind of looks like I have curls up here and then just straight bits here. All I can do is wait for it to get a bit longer so that I can cut out the layers but I can't currently do that because that would take it up here which is not happening. But yeah I have considerably shorter hair now. Um, <laughs> it's very round. <laughs> Why did I do this? I don't know. I just thought I'd give that update because it needed to be addressed. <laughs> I don't even think I gave you context but it is now a Friday. I didn't, I don't think I ended up vlogging yesterday but it's now Friday. I am actually about to do another FaceTime study session with Michelle and then I don't really know. My plans kind of end there. I did want to hand in my essay today but I just don't think that's going to happen which is a shame because I wanted today to be like my last day and kind of have my first chill weekend in a very long time. So that's not really worked out how I wanted it to because I highly doubt I will be able to hand it in today. I mean, I might just push through, but I don't want to put that kind of pressure on myself when I do have extra time. Like I don't want to give myself more of a deadline. But I don't know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'm not really feeling too great today after this and just in general anyway. So I don't know what today is going to be like. Um, but I'll update you on that as it happens. <laughs> uni. I just handed in my last essay. As you can see it's dark outside because it's half past nine at night and I've just done, I've, I've, I've just finished uni. I feel like this is going to take such a long time to sink in. <laughs> I don't have to write essays for a very long time. Wow. I've literally had to write an essay for about three years of my life now. <laughs> And it's just gone. <laughs> I really don't like the essay I've just handed in but at this point like I've done the best I can do um, considering the situation. It is what it is. I'm not going to be happy with it like I'm not going to be happy with anything I've handed in basically but I did it. I feel like I never let myself process the fact that I was doing uni and maintaining a YouTube schedule that had multiple uploads every single week and never faltered in that. I admittedly had many mental breakdowns during that time and in the space of this week I have handed in my dissertation, handed in my final uni essay and completed uni during a global pandemic, was accepted onto my master's course, was shortlisted for an award as best established vlogger and also reached 14,000 subscribers on this channel. What on earth has this week been? <laughs> That is a lot of stuff to process, wow. <laughs> this week has been insane. I <laughs> can't believe I'm emotional in two vlogs in a row, this is not okay. <laughs> As I said, I'm not exactly happy with how things ended for uni. Um, would anybody be? <laughs> I can look forward to my master's degree and 
just say I did that. I fucking did that. <laughs> I'm being far too dramatic about finishing uni. So many people do this, but my God, has it been a lot, Jesus Christ. And it's really weird as well because my entire uni experience is documented on this channel. I had this YouTube channel when I started uni and I can remember making my first study vlog. Oh my God, it's so bad. It's <laughs> such a throwback to remember already. So if any of you guys have been here for probably more than a year or so. You guys have seen so much of this journey and it's just weird to think that like, it's done. I did that. I actually, I've done it. <laughs> Once I have kind of chilled a bit, I'm, I am actually going to come back and give you that book haul I mentioned because it's already grown. I don't know how this keeps happening, but like, I could already make another book haul video, which is ridiculous. Um, but I'm going to go through that in a second. But we do not need a giddy Ashley bouncing off the walls while talking about new books. So I'm going to go have a moment and then I'll be back. <laughs> okay, I'm back. It's considerably later purely because I just went and sat down for a very long time. So I did. But <laughs> I now have this book haul. Um, I have nine books to show you guys which is ridiculous. Three of them I got myself. This isn't going to be an unboxing because I knew that I was receiving more because I had ordered myself some books. And every single time something arrived, I thought it was one of the ones I ordered, so I opened it and then it wasn't and that just kept happening. And then when I did eventually get my books, I knew that I had something else on the way. So again, I kept opening things and it wasn't what I expected. Anyway, long story aside, I have nine books to show you guys. <laughs> I was meant to be cutting down on my book acquisition um but we'll pretend that this is okay because i just finished uni <laughs> so i will start with the three that i got and i did get these for a very particular reason because as i've said i'm going to be doing a master's in literature but i do want to specialize in ancient texts but i haven't actually read that many so over summer i am going to be hopefully reading more around it and just kind of giving myself a better foundation knowledge in Greek mythology hopefully because I basically just know a lot about the Odyssey. Um, <laughs> I don't know too much outside of that besides stories here and there um, so I do want to give myself a better foundation with that and I saw on Instagram there is an account called Reading Ancient Classics who is hosting a read-along for some of the Greek tragedies. So I am going to try and participate with that. They're reading two of them a month and it goes over, I think it's three months. I'll leave a link to their account down in the description box because I know when I shared it on my Instagram story, quite a few people wanted to join in. So if there's anybody who's interested here, I will leave that down below. So I ended up scouting through my shelves to see if I actually owned the players because every edition of Greek plays seems to combine different plays in one so like there tends to be four plays within each of the bind ups but like there's no rhyme or reason between which plays are included or at least I don't know the rhyme or reason behind it because I'm not that well acquainted with them and there were quite a few that I didn't have so I just thought I would buy them and attempt to read along so that I had some kind of guidance of which ones to read next. Um let me do this I'm not going to show you the front covers of these two <laughs> because the last time I showed a cover like this. If you imagine a Greek statue, obviously they tend to have the bust naked, but the last time I showed one of the Oxford World Classics book covers, basically a bare-breasted woman, my video ended up being plastered with this kind of content warning on the front, which was really weird and just why we need things like feminism out of the world, because this guy, absolutely fine. This won't get a ban. Watch it get a ban now. The other two, however, very clearly have women without anything covering their top half and will very likely get one of those content warnings again. So in order not to have my own channel censored, um, <laughs> I'm not going to show you the cover of the other two, but these are the three I've got. So we do have, if you can, there we go. So all of these are by Euripides. I didn't really have too much by him, which is why I ended up needing to buy them. There are a couple that have been repeated because Things like Medea, for instance, or Electra comes up a lot. <laughs> so I think there's maybe one or two players in here which I did already own. However, for the most part, these are all completely new to me. I've barely even heard of them. Here I have the Bacchae and other players, Medea and other players, and Orestes? Orestes and other players? I need to... This is my thing. I'm still not good at pronouncing anything because I've never heard anybody say anything out loud. <laughs> 
<laughs> so bear with me if my pronunciations are all wrong. So between these three bind ups I do have most of the plays needed for the read along and as I said I don't know if I will be able to keep up but a gal can try <laughs> and even if I can't I did still want to expand my collection anyway so it's very good for me to at least know where to go because when you're just doing this thing by yourself it's a bit like things just go over your head a lot of the time so I'm very glad to add these ones to my collection. Now the rest of these were gifted to me and I have been baffled by every single one of them because I actually took my wish list down in February, at the end of February I think, but I only did that as in I took the links out of everywhere that was accessible but <laughs> Some of you guys have gone, I presume, to my old videos and found the link anyway and ordered from my wish list, which is incredible. Like, of course, I am so, so grateful for these, but it was so unexpected because I thought I'd gotten rid of my link and I didn't think anybody would think to go and find it. <laughs> you little sneaksters. I have since made my wish list fully private just because I did gain a lot over Christmas and my birthday in February so I've been wanting to catch up and I haven't been able to read as quickly as I would like to while at university so I did want to catch up on some of the things that have already been sent to me. So my wish list is fully private now. <laughs> but in the meantime a few of you guys decided to send me something all as congratulations for getting accepted into the master's course I wanted which is just the kindest thing that has happened in quite a while. It honestly just made my little heart just swell. We do continue with the ancient text theme though because I actually received The Rise of Rome by Livy, which is pretty much exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> but this was sent to me by Maddie Boyd and the note inside says, a tiny gift to say thank you for all of your amazing content over the years. You've achieved so much and I'm such a proud subscriber. You're a role model for me when coping with my own anxiety and I'm forever grateful. Love, Maddie Boyd. <laughs> That's such a nice note. <laughs> So thank you so so much Maddie. I really appreciate that like even just the note itself if I could have a PO box just so that people could send little notes rather than like actual gifts if they wanted to say anything I definitely would because I keep stuff like that like <sighs> it means so much to me but we do have a gift as well and yeah, The Rise of Rome. This does also include a few other plays such as The Rape of Lucretia and things like that. I did primarily have this on my list because I basically want to read a little bit around ancient Rome just so I can kind of distinguish where ancient Greece and ancient Rome crosses over a little bit more and kind of not have them wholly separate because that's just impossible but I feel like if I knew the basics behind like Roman mythology and Roman history and things and kind of where they cross over I feel like that could be very beneficial especially because there are a lot of Roman texts that are based on Greek mythology it's it can get very confusing very quickly <laughs> um so I wanted this one and also because I have read the Romulus and Roma story or at least I know some version of it. I don't actually know how I came to know about that mythology, I guess it would be classed as. It's just a story I've always had in my head and I would actually quite like to read it properly. There's probably more that I'm missing but I know the very basic story of it so I added this one to my list. <laughs> the cover makes me laugh because what? Is that a horse? It's such a derpy horse, it's not focusing. It has very long legs. <laughs> I love it so much. So thank you so so much Maddie for sending this one my way. Please come and shout in the comments because I am really bad at keeping track of like people's platforms and things. So if you're on Twitter, feel free to come and wave at me in my direct messages so I can be like, oh my god, thank you. Or just comment down below. But thank you, I really love it, thank you. And we still continue down this theme because I got a couple of books from Molly, again, from Mind of Molly and she has access to my wish list, or at least she did until I put it on private, so I couldn't do anything to stop her from sending more books. <laughs> But of course I endlessly appreciate it so thank you again Molly. And she did send me a couple of books. So the first one which is the one that links with the current theme is The Aeneid by Virgil. Now this one I believe people tend to call this one a kind of sequel to the Iliad and the Odyssey but written in Roman terms. 
poems? Yeah, so on the back it says, written by the Roman poet Virgil more than 2,000 years ago, the story of Aeneas's seven year journey from the ruins of Troy to Italy, where he becomes the founding ancestor of Rome. Aeneas and his companions contend not only with human enemies, but with the whim of the gods. His destiny preordained by Jupiter, Aeneas is nevertheless assailed by dangers invoked by the goddess Juno. Virgil's supreme achievement is not only to reveal Rome's imperial future for his patron Augustus, but to invest it with both passion and suffering for all those caught up in the fates of others. I mean, an argument between Jupiter and Juno just fighting over this one person sounds exactly right if you don't know Jupiter and Juno is Zeus and Hera in Greek mythology terms. And it does sound pretty similar to the Odyssey in terms of it taking a while to get home, but I know it's not the Odyssey because Odysseus' Roman name is Ulysses, so it's just like all the names matching up. <laughs> But yes, people see this as a kind of Roman sequel to the Odyssey and the Iliad and I am very excited to see what that is like. This has actually been recommended to me recently as well, so that's just... That's an added bonus. <laughs> the note in this one Molly put, I know you like these editions of classics, I don't think I'll be recreating this cover though. Because when she sent me the Phantom of the Opera she recreated the front cover of it and it was just... It was great. <laughs> But then, as I said, Molly did send me another book, and that is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Elizabeth Russell. Now, this is not my usual kind of read at all, because this is a contemporary book, and I don't usually read them, but when I do, I quite like them to tackle hard subjects, which is this book, like, down to a T, because this one handles sexual abuse, so trigger warnings for that, majorly. This one follows a woman who, when she was younger, was groomed by her school teacher, and she didn't really... I believe she didn't realise this, but now that she's older, it comes out that somebody has actually accused the school teacher of doing exactly that to them. So now there's this court case, and lots of new information being revealed, and she's kind of having to confront the fact that this also happened to her while also still not quite believing it. So as you can imagine, this one will be awful to read because it's quite literally somebody confronting their trauma and I've heard so many people say that it's uncomfortable to read but that's exactly what I would want from this book. Like if it did anything other than that, it would be problematic. But because of that, there have been raving reviews because it just shows that experience really realistically. And I do think that when it comes to lots of dark topics like this and hard hitting topics and difficult topics, books provide a safe space to explore that. And I just think that if a book can accurately do that and do that in a way that allows people to kind of glean and understanding. I feel like that's a really powerful thing for a book to do so I I won't say I'm excited to read this one because that's not the right wording but it's definitely one that I'm intrigued about and I really want this one to make me feel things like I want it to make me uncomfortable, make me angry, I want to get infuriated by the contents of this book because if it does that then it's bound to be brilliant writing. And I actually saw Cody talking about this one, it's Cody that convinced me to try it because she was reading this in one of her reading vlogs and kept saying that she had to put it down because it was that serious and like awful of subject matter that she couldn't really like just speed through it. But seeing her have that reaction just kind of made me want to experience that, which sounds really weird when you say it like that, but like I just think if a book can make you feel anything then that's just incredible, so. I'm intrigued about this one. I don't know when I'll get around to it because I do have to be in the mood for contemporary books and at the minute I just want to read fantasy, but I am more inclined to read this one sooner rather than later because a lot of my friends have been raving about this one, a lot of people whose reviews I trust as well. And we shall see how this one goes, but again thank you Molly for getting me this one and thank you for the note that you sent with it as well because I that was really cute and again I will be keeping it so yay. <laughs> and then we have a couple of other sneaksters who managed to find my wish list. <laughs> The first person being Anna Marie, who is just the sweetest human. And she actually got me two books. So the first one was Traitor's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. And I know somebody who is very, very happy about me having this one, Jade. This was actually on my wish list because of Jade. I don't really know too much about it, but Jade raves about Sebastian de Castel. I'm not too bothered by Spell Slinger, but I can't really pinpoint why. Maybe if I read the series and really enjoy it, I might go back and try that one, but this is the one I'm more inclined to try. This is the first book in the Great Coat series and from the back this has names I don't know how to pronounce. So the back says, the king is dead, the Great Coats have been disbanded and Falcio Valmond and fellow magistrates Kest and Brosty have been reduced to work as bodyguards for a nobleman who refuses to pay them. Jade, if you're watching, please let me know if I'm pronouncing any of those right. <laughs> Things could be worse. Their employer could be lying dead on the floor while the three of them are forced to watch as the killer plants evidence framing them for the murder. 
Oh wait, that's exactly what's happening. A royal conspiracy is about to unfold in the most corrupt city in the world and it could mean the ruin of everything Falcio, Kest and Brasti have fought for. If the trio want to unwind the conspiracy, save the innocents and reunite the great coats, they'll have to do it with nothing but the tattered coats on their backs and the swords in their hands because these days every noble is a tyrant, every king is a thug and the only thing you can really trust is a traitor's blade. I like the use of the title in the synopsis. We appreciate it. I am, however, now confused because I presumed this was a fantasy book but there is zero magic mentioned. Either way, I'm excited to read it. <laughs> I have seen this one likened to Robin Hobb, which was not a comparison I was expecting, but if that is the case, we're already off to a good start. <laughs> And then the other book that Anna Marie sent me is Pages & Co by Anna James. Now, I actually added this to my wish list because of Tasmin. Tasmin really loves this one. It's a middle grade book that follows a girl called Tilly who lives above the bookshop that her grandparents own. And one day she's just chilling in the bookshop and she realizes that the book characters such as Alice in Wonderland are actually coming to life. She then realizes that she is a book wanderer which means that she can go between all of these fantasy worlds and it doesn't take too long for her to wonder if this newfound power can help her solve the mystery about where her mum went. It is entirely down to Tasmin why I wanted to read this book. <laughs> she has been raving about this one in her recent videos and it doesn't take much for me to be convinced to read a book to be honest. Like if somebody recommends me a book specifically or if I hear a friend rave about a book, I'll want it. <laughs> Which, thinking about it, is very evident in this haul because at least three or four of them include my friend's recommendations, so. This one just sounds so fun, so whimsical, and as I said, it's a middle grade. I will actually be making my way through a lot of my middle grade pile during Believeathon, so I've been on the lookout for any others that I'm particularly interested in because I feel like I do already own all the ones that I am interested in so I have been on the lookout and as I said Tasmin has been raving about this one recently so I thought I would give it a go so thank you so so much Anna Marie for sending these two my way the note again is lovely it says hi Ashley I just wanted to send you a little something to congratulate you on all your success lately you brought joy to my days more times than I can count I'm so happy for you and then the final book <laughs> I am actually a little bit baffled that I own this because I wanted to read this book for about four years now but I kind of forgot about it for a while and it wasn't until a few days ago when Becca actually brought it back to my attention that I remembered how much I wanted to read it and I looked back into the synopsis again, kind of re-fell in love with the idea of it and then just added it to my wish list and then a few days later it arrived because... <laughs> This one was sent to me by Lauren and the note says, Hi Ashley, I'm pretty new to your channel but I adore your content. You're so creative and a real pleasure to watch. I hope you enjoy your gift. So thank you so so much Lauren, both for subscribing and even thinking to send me a note already when you're a new subscriber. That is just mind-blowing to me. <laughs> but this one is Labyrinth Lost by Zoraida Cordova and like I said, I'm a little bit... It seems wild to me that this is in my hands because literally since it came out I've wanted to read this one which I, I think it was four years let me have a look oh my god it was actually four years what a great guess wow but I believe this one is a Latin American inspired fantasy book and it follows Alex who is a Bruja which means she is the most powerful witch of her generation however she does not like magic so on her death day which I believe is some kind of celebration she actually tries to get rid of her magic by casting a spell on herself but it does rebound, it goes very wrong and it causes her entire family to just vanish into thin air. The only person she's left with is a Bruja called Nova, however she despises this woman. Nova also happens to be the one person who might actually be able to help her get her family back so I just think this sounds so good like I've never read a fantasy book where somebody just disliked their magical abilities. Can you imagine that? I would love to have magic, how can somebody not want that? <laughs> so I want to see how that is the thing, like if it's very evident and if it feels realistic. I want to know why she doesn't like her magic and I also obviously want to see the plot and if she does manage to get her family back. I haven't seen this one mentioned in a little while so if you have read this one please let me know because it felt quite popular around the time that it came out so if you've read this one please let me know and thank you so so much Lauren for sending this one my way. It's so exciting to have it. So that was my spontaneous but um, rather large book haul of the week. <laughs> for now I'm going to go and get comfortable, get ready for bed and just chill for a while. I don't know what I'm doing tomorrow. I have no plans. Wow, imagine that. Unbelievable. <laughs> But she has a 
such excellent taste. We both share a love of Greek mythology. She makes beautiful videos and The things you gotta do Always moving Forward Always on the Go I hope you take A moment To take It slow Let me be The one to be it's now Sunday and I've basically just come here to wrap up the vlog because I have done nothing which means I haven't read. <laughs> um, I actually decided to DNF Aurora Burning because even though I was 200 pages in and I was liking it more than the first book I still wasn't really feeling it and I've been really slumpy this week. I haven't finished a book in over a week now. Um, and alongside finishing up uni and everything, I just haven't really had the time to. And since I wasn't loving Aurora Burning, it was just really making me even more slumpy, not making me want to read. So I've actually set that one aside and we'll just move on because <laughs> Believeathon starts tomorrow. I have to start reading middle grade books and I'm going to be buddy reading Arusha with Jean and things like that. So I just, I gave up on it. <laughs> so I actually don't think I can call this weekly vlog a weekly reading vlog because did I do any reading? Absolutely not. But like I just said I am actually going to be finishing this vlog here because for the rest of this evening I'm going to be acting as Quizmaster for Becca and Gavin's birthday bash live show so if you missed that I'll leave a link to Becca's channel down below because it will be on there if you want to see some what I imagine will be hilarious content of people getting kind of drunk and trying to play games and answer quizzes and things like that. But it does mean that I won't have any more footage for the rest of today. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did then remember to leave a like and a comment to let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already then please consider doing that. Down in the description box you'll find information to everything I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media links and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!